history of some of the men and look back at the history of yourself. The Bible said, first let a man examine himself to see if he's a faith. Ephesians said, we all once walked the course of the world according to the prince of the power of the air that now worketh in the spirit of disobedience among who also were on conversations in the past time had lust of the flesh, desires of the flesh and of the mind for we by all children around. I had spicy language. Huh, give me a Heineken, give me a Heineken in the Tangare. Am I there? Never did the poke, poke, pass, pass stuff. Never believed in that. But I showed did some drinks. And it doesn't matter how much you drink or what you drink. The fact was, is a, it was an S-I-N in there. We all did something. You're not perfect in the flesh. You're never going to be perfect as long as you're here on earth. The Bible declares said that, uh, that faith coming by hearing. Hearing comes by the word of God. But we got to understand one thing. When the Bible says no weapons formed against us, he didn't say they weren't formed. He says it just won't prosper. It all depends on your level of faith and the belief. The Bible says we war in the spirit every day. But the world of the Ephesians says that we fight not against the flesh and blood, but we do. We fight against our own people. The Bible declares in the creeds that we all were children of disobedience. We all had spicy language back in the old days. We all walked among things what was behind closed doors. We all did desires of the flesh. We all had things of the man whereby we were all children of wrath. But God comes on the scene. But God who was rich in his mercy and grace, where he loved us, wherewith he loved us. And even when we are dead in our sins, he quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. This only by grace you are saved. It's only by grace that God saved you Melt my crazy self and your crazy self. We're going to move a little forward. Here. God says in verse 10, he said, they fall. They shall, they should, they, he said, they shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for the foxes. See, see, that's speaking of just, you just did. You, 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 you left for slaughter. The Bible says over in the Amplified Version, they shall give over to the power of the sword and they shall be prey to the foxes and the jackals. Man, you just meet in the desert. You just meet in the desert. Let me look at another part over here in this 10th verse. Let me go over so look at another area in the version over here. Let's look over here in the, um, let's look over here in the English Standard Version, the 6th verse, in the 10th verse. See what it says? He said, they shall give over to, power, to the power of the sword, and they shall be as a portion of the jackals. Now, let's look at something. Let's, let's, let's break this thing on down a little bit more. Let's look at some more things right here. It says in one of these particular, uh, I'm going to look at the Barnes and Noble breakdown. It says margin. They shall make him run out of water. Think about what it said. They shall make them run out of water. The hands of the sword, the word renders in the text, they shall fall. In the margin, they shall make him run out. Meaning that when they follow the poor examples of what God declared for them to be toward one another, it's almost like they're taking the Holy Spirit from them, they're taking the water away from them. They'll run through a dry place and they never have the kind of nourishing water they need to put them back on position. they refresh them. The idea here is that they will be devoured on their own slava. Sometimes the word of God said the very words you speak out about somebody is like a boomerang coming right back to you. It's like a basin of a pitcher. Is delivering over the head of a sword. The constant you, the more you swing at somebody, the sword is getting closer to your head. The more you talk at somebody, the guillotine is getting closer to you. The less you talk, the more the guillotine is lifted. The more you talk about, the guillotine is getting closer. It's getting closer to it begins to slain you and bring you to the point of submission that you got to know, hey man, look here, I'm sorry. Some people don't care about you. They don't care about you. They will run you to death and they will not give you an ounce of their time because they now they're on top. They feel that they're on top and they have no more use for you. They got all what they got out of you. There are people that's come, come out and slain you. People are going to talk about you. They're going to put you down. And I can remember all the things, even my little daughter, she used to go to a lot of meetings with me and she always asked me, Daddy, why you don't go to that meeting no more? I don't say anything because she's learning at a young age. Now, sometimes men come before you to tell you all about what they have, what they're doing. They're never interested in you. They don't care how you drag your family up and down the street. They don't care how you put them through stuff. As long as they got you in a position to tell about what they're doing, they're never going to share their candy with you. 
They're never going to give you not one sucker out of their box. They're going to tell you everything that they want and what they have to do and what they want you to do with them. They're not going to share their spoils. So what you got to do is trust in God. Lean out to your own understanding. But not as God in all his way did he direct your past. I'm telling you, man, and woman of God, you got to read the book over in Acts chapter 5 when Gamaliel came to the Sanhedrin's. He told them, you have devoured some men some time ago who came and tried to bring the word. That is a couple of group of men. But now there's another group of men that come along. He said, set apart these men and leave them alone because they do the work of the ministry. Because if this thing be a man, it'll fall. Everybody can get the groovy, nice names about what their ministry should be. But it's, it's all about your performance, what you're doing. And you know what? It ain't always inside of buildings. We got things about just going inside of buildings all the time. When we offer to come in somebody's ministry and speak and talk, the word is the mission field. The Bible said go through all the world and proclaim the gospel. When you come out of that brick and that mortar, go take it to your supermarket, take it to your mall, get some cards in your pocket. If you got a church, a pastor you're going to, somebody need a good church, say, hey, I know this pastor, go to this church. He's a good pastor. He's one of the pastors I know. What, what area of town you stay in? Your job is to make meetings with people and have pastors you know all over the Metroplex, all over the DFW Metroplex here in Dallas. In Texas, where I'm at, I'm always finding pastors all over the metroplex. I say, where do you stay? I know a good pastor over here. Go there and talk with him. Big or small, they're going to help you move forward when God's declared for your life. And remember, it's not about the size of the building. It has nothing to do with it. Old sages back in the day, small in the size, but big otherwise, all you had to do is say yes. Sometimes things big come in small packages. Sometimes small packages come in big things. You know what I'm saying? Big box can carry the most precious thing. Small box can carry the most unprecious thing. So it always what you, it always what you want to fit into. You know, sometimes we look at things we don't understand what's going on in life. But one thing I will say, and I say this all the time, you ought to learn to be a lifeguard for the kingdom of God. You ought to learn how to sever your relationships with people. Never cut what you can untie. Develop your skills on how to forgive before you cut someone off. Learn how to forgiveness. Learn how to forgive people. Tell somebody you're sorry. Tell them you love them. Tell them you care about them. And you'll see some healing, some manifestation come in your own life as you go forth. God's always got a plan for our life and supersede far beyond more than we can imagine. I want you guys to join us on tomorrow morning at 9.45 for actually morning educational class here at Harvest Light Church. 11.45, we're going to be bringing this fantastic word that's coming from the kingdom of God, along with my beautiful wife, co-pastor Patty Ellis. We're also doing a work that's coming out of the uh, uh, the, the 21st, dealing with the area of um, um, uh, our positive feedback with the uh, man of God, Anthony Stratton, young man that's been a part of the, sh the streets, and now God has brought him in. There's a lot of men out there, women out there that have been a part of the streets, God has brought them in. But they got some powerful testimonies to bring other people in and tell them just what's going on. It's not by style, it's not by fame. For those who are young kids are going to be coming in, we invite you to bring your mothers on with you. They can let you come on. And we've got to get that authorized by them first. Uh, we'll have my little daughter probably be listening to some things. She'll be on the headphones. A very smart young lady. A lot of things I don't want to be inappropriate, but if she do, uh, we'll, we'll pull it back. We know how to pull it back. But also on Monday morning at 9.30, I mean at 10.30, you got the woman of God called Pastor Pat Ellis always. Sometimes you don't catch her here in the States. She may be out in the Philippines. She might be in Africa. She may be in India. Some of her services are pre-recorded services. So don't worry about that. They'll make their way back around to the States sometime in a later hour. It's an hour differential that we got going on here in the world. And so we got to understand that Central Standard Time, Eastern Standard Time, different areas bring forth different words. And also on Wednesday morning, you got me, truly yourself, Apostle Charles Ellis here at Harvest Light Church and Harvest Light Church. You can pick us up on any station. All you got to do is go to my website. Click on the banners or whatever it may be. Find out the time and service of services. Hey, look, come be with us. Join us in the studio. Be a part. Got a good word you want to put out? Hey, look, get a hold of me. Don't be too late, but let me know in the time that we can get it out there and get you all set up. Get your banners out there. You know, get your posters out there and let people know about you. But it's always truly a pleasure for you guys to be with us here at Harvest New Life Church and Harvest New Life Studios. To me and my beautiful daughter, Co-Pastor Patty Ellis, we're going to say, hey, look, look, God bless you. Have a beautiful afternoon.
no matter 